friends, Wickety here with another Stardew Valley 1.4 update guide. This update brings a ton of new stuff to discover, crops, events, and items to craft. One of the items released was the fish pond. I'll be going over how to make it, what it's for, and a little bit on how it works. Quick little spoiler note, later in the video I'll be going over what new endgame content this fish pond is needed for, but we'll get there later and I'll give you a heads up at that time. Okay, so first off, the fish pond is a new farm building that can be built by Robin over at the carpenter shop. You will need 5 seaweed, 5 green algae, 200 stone, and 5,000 gold for Robin to build it, and it takes up a 5x5 space. It should take about 3 days to build, counting the day that you placed it down. Once that pond is ready, it's time to stock it up with some fish and get some row flowing. The pond will have a different amount of fish to start off with, depending on what type of fish you want to raise. Each pond is limited to one type of fish, and there are some beach forageables that will work as well, like sea urchin and coral, as well as some crab pot fish. Your pond starts off with the space for the maximum starting amount allowed for that type of fish, and over time, you'll see that there will be a little exclamation point on the pond. That means that the fish needs something to make the pond a bit more habitable for more fish. The rarer fish will ask for harder to get items, and after you offer tribute to the fish gods, I mean meet their demands, the ponds will allow room for more fish. Sea urchin and coral are a special case, as they don't produce row. When I threw in my coral, the max allowed was 10, so you'll know that these won't be giving you any quests to upgrade their pond. But you can and should definitely use your pond to multiply them if you like using them for crafting. I started out with just one, and I began multiplying a lot over the next few days. I had a pond for sea cucumbers for making lucky lunches. When you notice that your pond is getting full, you can go ahead and fish a few out for what you need and let it repopulate again. The only exception to reproducing are tiger trouts. They will give you roe, but not any more fish. After some time, depending on the fish, your pond will start to produce roe. I only got row to produce from these fish after I finished the pond to request first, but it's not a requirement, as I've gotten row before my first pond upgrade from other fish. With this row, you can eat it, sell it, or put it in a preserves jar to make an aged row for a better selling price. Now, a few things about the pond. You can change the appearance of the pond, which I love. Ooh, and certain fish will also change the color of the water after the first upgrade to match its original habitat. So cool! You will have to reset the pond if you'd like to change out the fish for different ones, but if you do while there are still fish in the pond, they will be lost, so I suggest fishing them all out before you reset it. Also, if you throw in a fish that has a silver, gold, or iridium star next to it, once it hits that pond, it's back to being a basic fish. And now here is your end game spoiler warning. We're going over what new late game item you need this pond for. You ready? You good? Okay. After you have completed the community center and shut down Jojo Mart for good, there will be this cutscene when you sleep during a storm. Lightning will strike the door of the abandoned Jojo Mart. If we investigate the shutdown Jojo Mart, you'll see a Junimo in here with a lost bundle for us to complete. One of the items on this list is some caviar, so let's go ahead and get some ready with our new fishing pond. Caviar in Stardew Valley can come from one fish, and that is the sturgeon. Now, you can find sturgeon for sale every now and again from the traveling merchant, or even a chance that Kerbis will sell it on Wednesdays. Otherwise, to catch it, you'll need for the season to be summer or winter and to go fishing in the mountain lake. I found that this fish was always one of the trickier ones to catch, but you only need one for the pond, as one is all that this breed can start out with. This is going to take some time and patience, as sturgeon is one of the fish that takes the longest to start producing roe. But don't worry, soon enough your fish will demand… diamonds? Really? Eh, this better be worth it. And that was four days in. It's been six days since we dropped in that diamond, and I can see that we have our row ready. And the sturgeons are multiplying, which is fantastic! And of course, with sturgeon row, you'll need to put it into the preserves jar to make what we need, and it takes a while until it's ready. 100 in-game hours to be exact, so I suggest not just staring at the jar and go find something productive to do. Or you could be like me, just sleep it off. A couple days later, and they have their demands again. Pickles? Why pickles? Of course I don't have any on me right now. Okay, so needy. 
While I have some pickles in the works, it looks like a row has finished preserving. And there we have it. After a few days, we have a luxurious caviar. Ready to go drop off at the bundle and start gathering the rest of that list. Okay, you guys, spoiler over. Personally, I'm having a lot of fun with the fish ponds. I really enjoy being able to upgrade them, and I like going on the fetch quest for my little fishies. Also, not having to head to the ocean each time I need something specific is a bonus. Sure, it might not be the most profitable item in game, but it adds a fun new way to play, so I'm all for it. What do you think? Are you enjoying the new update so far? Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, if you'd like to see more Stardew Valley videos from me, drop a like and subscribe. I'm Wickedy, thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!